firstly, it's really about honouring Alkaline. Al- Alkaline mm. heard a lot of the new songs before wow. he passed. Yeah, he heard them and he kind of like, you know, he'd say, yeah, yeah, I like that one, I like that one. You know, he heard Pistol and all that, he heard all of that stuff. So it's in, it's in honour of Alkaline and Coasty, mm-hmm. really. That's what that album's all about. A question that kind of... Could be a bit spicy. <laughs> a question that came up in my head as you were talking there. Is the timeline of an artist... You guys are good people to speak to because you, you, you've lived through a lot. You've seen a lot of generations. You've seen recent passings, and the ambition is still there, like mm. making, keeping it going. But are there any, are there any actual challenges in your minds in 2024? Obviously, the challenges in the 90s, but you know, we're talking about a time where people are passing, mm. where time's pl- passing quicker, mm. where albums may take a little bit longer for all of the family, life-related reasons. Mm. Like, what? How, how does that... When I say this, how does it sit with you mm. in the current state of gunshot? Oh, great question. Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's all on you. Yeah, Listen to your questions, mate. Questions. Lead us. I oh, know, it's a conversation. Oh, right. <laughs> 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 <That's me. laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London as you could possibly be. Trust me. Big shout out to everybody from the beginning to the middle to right now that's been supporting from the jump in all walks of street culture. We know where you're walking and we're heading the same direction. So, uh, yeah. Count your bettings on that. How sponsors the mighty GK Nifty Heads have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gknifteyheads.com and get ready for Hoddle Wars Summer 2024. Uh, inside the house. The buck kind of stops with these guys. There's only one gun. Sh- tr- listen, when we're talking about history, heritage, and a relentless turnaround of music from the 80s onwards, and we're taking dominance in the 90s without question. Um, I was a, a fan from the beginning. The hysteria noise, the heavy duty, armored vocal elasticity of these gentlemen right here. Uh, it could only be one. The awesome gunshot in the building. How are we doing? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> what an introduction, yes, Kevin, man. Yes. Hey, man. Please start be on here, you know what I mean? What can't speak, can't lie, your output over the decades has been absolutely non stop. Um, was that ever in the handbook to begin with? Did you, did you, did you jump on the train, think to yourself, well, time we turn this thing around? This, you know, we're going to make a dent in the UK hip hop scene. Mm. Um, so basically, there has been a bit of a. So when we first started, we started the first record, Battlecreek Brawl, came mm-hmm. out in May 1990. And um, I don't really think from that first single there was any plans to go beyond that. Mm-hmm. It just so happened that it did pretty well. Mm-hmm. And the record company at the time, Vinyl Solution, based up in West London, mm-hmm. just took a punt on us. Mm-hmm. It was predominantly a punk label. Um, so they were kind of used to doing all sorts of different genres of music. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, pro- proper music, which was kind of well out there. Mm-hmm. But they also had, like, because Lalo Ladbrook Grove being the kind of heartbed of hip-hop in West London and to some certain degree the whole of London as well, like, you know what I mean? Depends how you look at mm. it. They had Cash Crew there, they had Mighty Ethnics. Yeah, do you know what I mean? All of them cats are coming at Power Lords. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Ooh. So they were familiar. There was a hotbed of talent. So when we came along, although we're from East London, they mm. took a punt. Like I said, Battle Greek Ball came out, um, did well, mm. and then we just had a couple of, well, a number of successive 12 inches, and then the first album dropped, Patriot Games in 1993. Crazy. Yeah, man. Like, so long ago. Yeah, long ago, man. Oh. And then it, it's kind of gone on from there, but then there's been a massive break, because obviously Gunshot now isn't the same as what Gunshot was back then. Mm-hmm. So, so to answer your question in a long... In a roundabout way, it's not been consistent because of time gaps and stuff. Mm. But um, it just so happens that, you know, we did produce the material, but mm. we didn't really have plans to say, right, OK, we're going to be relevant for 35 years. Yeah. It's like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. UK it. hip-hop, that don't really happen, if I'm honest, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, But even before that, you know what I mean? Even before the first album, or the first 12-inch Battle Creek Ball, 
who was all hip hop fans anyway. Mm. Not even just hip hop fans, but we were reggae fans. Like our, our clan was a reggae fan. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we was brought up in reggae. Mm. Like probably the most people growing up in the seventies mm. in London, from you know Caribbean, Jamaican parents. Yeah. It was reggae. Yeah. You know what I mean? How was ska for you at that time? Because that was obviously an emerging scene in itself, and it. it ska it was probably probably weren't really our time. It was probably before that. Mm. When, when it when it comes to ska, it's probably probably seventies, eighties, early. You're more 80s. sound system, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 We're, we're we're from the era of the sound systems that came out. Coxon, Saxon, yeah, and all of that. Especially yeah. Alkaline, that was his thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, you ain't got to sell it to me, man. Rest in peace. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So growing up, it was. I mean, hip hop came into our, to say our lives probably early, early eighties, mm. with the electro and everything like that. But then on the flip side. You had the reggae, and then you had soul as well, because I were older brothers and they were into soul. So, mm. I mean, in the 80s, there was a big soul scene. Explosion. Yeah. Yeah. You know, SOS Princess, and then, you know, Soul to Soul. This yeah. was, was, it was kind of an emerging thing in itself, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, for me, though, I was, <laughs> I've always been a little bit, I've always liked quirky sounding music. So, although coming from a Jamaican family, like, reggae was there, it wasn't really my vibe. Mm. I was, I started kind of like latching on to madness and, uh-huh. Adam and the Ants and stuff like that. Yeah, Some yeah. which was always quirky. Cause let's be totally honest. Back then, black music wasn't really catered for in the mainstream no, media. No, so no, you no, took no, what no, you no, could. No. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. Yeah. Break Machine came on top of the pops, and that was like, oh my god. But after that, rest of it I weren't really following. But like I was always more like a quirky thing, really, rather than traditional reggae. So, yeah. You know I mean? And do you think that? Tra- I mean, uh, this is a loaded question. Actually, does it transfer? Like you guys seem to, particularly in your early stuff, you seem to have adopted very much a cultural reflection on what what was going on sonically for its time mm. you know i hear i hear you know elements of you know that kind of prodigy hysteria sound with bomb squad and then elements you know the speed of things with you know the, the emergence of rave you know i i just hear I, I hear a lot of things where i think to myself man like cutting edge but you know, maybe you didn't see it like that at the time. Do you know what? I, I think about this from time to time. And, and to be honest with you, there's a lot of elements which really, it shouldn't have worked. From the name, Gunshot. Do you know what I mean? I know my man always kind of had a little bit misgivings about that. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? No, 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 he but, was reserved. Yeah, you know what I mean? No, no. Yeah. Um, the fact that it was like kind of like 100 miles per hour. Do you know what I mean? And all these other elements... You, you kind of don't think, if you wrote it down on paper, you'd kind of think, oh, I'm not quite sure. But I think it was perhaps we came about around that rave scene. Mm. Summer of Love was 1989, so there was a hecticness yeah. about the music and the whole vibe at that time. And although we were strictly hip-hop, and, um, you know, I guess for us, in order to kind of make an impact, we felt we had to, like, rhyme pretty quick. Mm. It kind of had a little bit of a, an impact, really, because, like, that, that was the kind of vibe going around at mm. the time, that kind of fast heavy, harded, loaded beats and, mm. and lyrics and stuff, you know what I mean? And then from there, I think it's just a distinctiveness because the first single, Battle Creek, well, you had three rappers on there, mm-hmm. okay? So you had, like, the traditional kind of, like, swagger dagger US rapper kind of mm-hmm. vibe, Q-Rock, myself, kind of British, mm-hmm. and then you had Al Klein, the ragger, yeah. you know what I mean? And then you had an amazing Scratch DJ, White Child Ricks and producer, so mm-hmm. it all blended together. And it kind of sounded a little bit different than we were, what we was expecting. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, mm. you know, so yeah, it's it's like it's kind of a happy accident, really. But what we've done, we've taken that, and then we've tried to kind of keep building on it. So that was on us, mm-hmm. building on it and doing the albums on us. Mm-hmm. The first twelve inch and how it landed, whether or not people were gonna kind of be into Gunshot or not. That's that was just a flip of the coin. Flip of the coin. Yeah. But also, scene played a big part in that. I mean, what I found interesting is it kind of. You kind of moved in a way that bands would move. You know, artists would move from crew to crew, kind of find their feet in certain uh, moments in time that then formed their own collective. And, you know, speaking to AJ as well, it was very much a case that it was an incubated scene that was growing mm-hmm. over the course of time. And that's, I mean, you don't get that now, do you? No. You know. um, what's awesome is that Kirok obviously went on to, you know, other, other <coughs> pastures. Sun or noise, yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Like, how... Do you, how do you remember that time? And was it as a frantic as I imagine it to be? Yeah, it was. It was an exciting time. Mm. You know what I mean? It was a very competitive time as well, because obviously we come up with our 12 inch, and even before that, you had like Hydra come out with their 
Hold no hostage and everybody looked mm. up to Hijack. Hijack was the crew. Mm. You know what I mean? You had MC Mello come out with his coming correct. So it was always fast anyway. Mm. Hip hop was fast then. Then Hard Noise come out with Entitled. Mm. Mm. So it was, everyone's just feeding off of each other. Yeah. You know Catch what I mean? 22. Catch 22 was there. Crispy so, Free bro- was Brotherhood around that time? Yeah, I think they were. Oh, yeah, yeah, Brotherhood yeah. was around. Yeah. I think their album dropped probably later. later. It's on that major as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was on yeah. major. So yeah, no, the competition was fierce, them mm. bears, I would have thought, you know what I mean? Mm. You know, some some of us may, you could say, sounded American, and some of them, yeah, that British sound, and the London Post was always there, innit? So, mm. yeah, but London then I think for us, it kind of got to the point where, even though we was like from London, our music was kind of different as well in terms of how it sounded. It was, you know, White, White tried richly used a lot of sounds, mm. you know what I mean, in his music. But then we kind of got to the point where, you know, it's not just about London. Mm. You know what I mean? It isn't about London. No. Well, you should become an export, <coughs> don't you? Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. The, 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 the collective noise, you know, brings it to the bubble. And then next thing you guys are travelling. Mm. Which, yeah. which is really where the international story begins. Because, you know, I remember getting into Europe as Killer Keller. And your names would be the first names that come out of people's mouths. Mm. Then Killer Instinct, mm. then Blade. Mm. You know, maybe the odd brotherhood here, but the majority of it was gunshot without question. Mm. So, so you guys, obviously, you know, you, you walked the boards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, I mean, like, yeah, Europe was very important for us. <clears throat> and the university scene in the UK as well, mm. cause just touching on what B was saying there, because our sound, it wasn't just the fact that our sound was different, it was the fact that we were happy to go on tours with bands which weren't hip hop. Mm. We were ch- touring with Chumba Wamba, like some this band called Therapy, this Northern Irish, this Irish, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, very cool stuff. God, God, <laughs> like I mean, like some really fresh metal stuff. Yeah. We did it all. Do you know what I mean? And that opened up people who wouldn't normally have listened to UK hip hop. We just mm. got a completely different audience, mm. and for us, it was something we embraced as well. Mm. We, we wouldn't necessarily have done Mind of a Razor with Shame from Napalm Death. That was kind of my, I have to admit, that was kind of my entry. That was your entry point. And I was like, what? Yeah, yeah because I, mean, you know, I was a metalhead first. There you go. And, and you just never... Lovely bloke, by the way. Is he? Yeah. Oh, mate. I'll type Birmingham crew, you know. Mate, you know, different is. level. You know what I mean? The, the crops in Germany, so... Yeah, so anyway, so like, doing that in terms of the UK opened up an audience, and then Europe, particularly Germany, they kind of labelled that kind of fast, frenetic type of UK hip-hop brick core. Mm-hmm. Okay, which I have to admit... We were quite um, neutral about that as yeah. a term, but looking on it now, I think we should be proud of that because a thousand percent, thousand percent. With the passing of time, you think actually that helps to distinguish our sort of hip hop from yeah. all others. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But Germany's been in a, a massive, massive, important jump off point for gunshot, mm. in it, be most definitely Germany was the place to be, man. Mm. You know what I mean? They loved hip hop as well. Even when you go to certain parts of Europe at the time, Sweden, Switzerland, mm. it kind of brought the excitement back for us, yeah. Mm. You know, from the eighties when we started touring into Europe, because for them it was kind of fresh still. Mm. Mm. They were doing the break dancing, they were doing the graffiti, they were doing everything. Mm. So then when we were coming that scene, it was just like, yeah. And then to do the shows and everything like that, yeah, it was good, man. And you wouldn't necessarily have got that love in the UK, in no. London, if I'm totally honest. No. Outside of London, as Barry said yeah. earlier, yeah anywhere, whole, you name it, man, it was like, and we always took it on ourselves, like, look, do you know what, like, if you go into, like, like, Preston, you kind of was aware that perhaps Preston didn't get a lot of the acts who came over to yeah, the UK, yeah, 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 who would yeah. go to them places, yeah. they'd have to, people living in Preston, would have to travel to London, yeah. so we took it upon ourselves, that like, if we're going to Preston, the least we can do is give them a show. Yeah. Like, not yeah. like going there half cock. Mm-hmm. Excuse the pun, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean we've done, yeah, done a lot of shows. We've done a lot of shows in the UK. We've done oh, God, how many shows we've done all together oh, in total? We've yeah. done a lot of shows. 300 so. odd, do you know what I mean? Which is like. For, 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 for young sort of guys, genre, we're in our mid, early, early 20s. For us in our early 20s, just to travel all over the UK and Europe as well, it's just um, mm. not a lot of people get that sort of opportunity, you know, no, to do that. You guys were definitely within the elite tier of people that were active and doing it. And the opportunities arose from that. It's funny because when you, Preston's a great example. When you end up going to those more rural places, mm. 
that's that's the net widening yes. on the basis that you've already hit capitals. Yes. You've made your impact. Mm. Now you become like social commentary from a UK hip hop standpoint that you can actually be booked into them places and people know you. Yeah. That in itself is a, a testament to how hard you've got to hit it. Well, we because we were doing a university tour, you're now being booked by bigger touring agents. You're not having to try and negotiate these things directly. The SMJ, which is still one of the biggest touring agents out there, mm. was putting on gunshot with Chumba Wumba and all these other acts. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, so that isn't that wasn't necessarily open to all acts. Mm-hmm. It's only because we was able to take. Maybe because Vinyl Solution, as I said, had its roots in punk. Mm. So straight away we had a different in in terms of certain access to certain things that other bands might not have had mm-hmm. from a hip-hop background. But we embraced it. Mm-hmm. That was more the point. We embraced it. And it was a time where, like I said, like in certain areas, you wouldn't necessarily have a UK hip-hop no. or any hip-hop no. go to that area. And we, we, we loved it. We did it, man. We had a great time. And if I'm honest with you, I think we was always quite humble, if I'm honest. You know, that was for us, it was all about... We loved the music as much as the people who supported us. I don't even mm-hmm. like using the word fans. Mm-hmm. It was just like, we was on the stage vibing. People could see we really enjoyed what we did and yeah. we managed to project that outward. So, that if anything, if anyone had to say what was the thing which you were most proud of when you guys were doing tours, it was the fact that we kind of put a smile on people's faces and people could see we were genuine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all we From the wanted. crowd onto From the stage. From the crowd onto the stage and vice versa. Going back to uh, Germany and what you said there about the attitude of hip-hop comparable to maybe somewhere like France, Belgium, UK. It's interesting how their take on it is one of... Uh, with London... And I can say this because I wasn't there at the time. <laughs> <laughs> to my understanding, uh, London was very far away with the idea of things like break dancing. You know, graffiti stood the test of time. Mm. MCing developed and was built mm. and went into different stratospheres. Um, the brick core thing. Um, I remember a, a podcast that Pharrell was on, and one thing that Teddy Riley said to him was like, "Dude, you should have given your sound a name. Mm. You know, New Jack Swing." Mm. was a thing because we gave my, my sound a name. Mm. And uh, you guys were on the precipice of this. Uh, mm. And in my mind, Brickcore, although created as a genre mm. of its own to service the European side, mm. I still think it holds weight. Like, it coming from a source of purity where UK really didn't have a... Nowadays, it's almost signalled that, you know, grime is grime because of the name. Yeah. It's very interesting how ahead of the time you guys were with that. Yeah, yeah. That's like that's a really good point. I mean, ironically, I think as I said, we were kind of neutral, but I do know that a lot of bands at the time perhaps looked down their noses at that term. Name them, name and no, shame. No, no, Let's no. go. No, but it, you, 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 like this is things something I thought about, and, and I don't think we. You, you kind of with the fullness of time, you start to understand things a bit better. You got to understand hip hop coming over to the UK, right, was a fully built genre in and of itself. Mm. So. For us, all we were ever going to be at that time was a, a spokesperson for hip-hop. Mm-hmm. We were never going to be the real deal, you know, because people would say, well, I hear that this is a UK hip-hop band, but I can go to Formula. I can go to the US, do you know what I mean? This is just a, like a, a, a I'm not going to say a poor variation of the actual original mm. cast, but you know what I mean? You yeah. understand what I'm saying? You've got, yeah. the, you've got your cordial oil and then you've got the dilute. Yeah, do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 so yeah. you're fighting up against that straight away, I get you. do you know what I mean? And then because of that, if you're trying to carve out a niche, which is going to sound distinct from what you're used to hearing, mm-hmm. you're going to get people who are not necessarily into that. They're going to pick up on the fact that it's fast. Because we used to have it. Like, I can't really hear everything you're saying. You know what I mean? Because they missed the point that it wasn't necessarily about um, um, style. It was about... No, it wasn't sometimes about substance. It was about a style. Yeah. You know what I mean? So brick core in and of itself had a bit of a negative connotation. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's only now... Okay, which may be too late, if I'm honest, because like the the people into Brickcore are, are, are shrinking because we're getting older. We, mm-hmm. We're not necessarily getting new people coming into the mm-hmm. the scene of for listening to our sort of music. So it's shrinking. So we might have missed the boat in regard to that. But in terms of like the label, you're completely right. Brickcore is something we should have kind of embraced. And what you could do, you can create substratas within that. Yeah, that's right. You could, like, you have yeah. grime. I'm not that familiar with the grime. You probably are more than me, but I'm sure there's substratas, different type of grime and this, that and the other. Same with drum and bass. And drum and like bass. That, yeah. We could have had that with Brickcore. Yeah. But as I said, 
You know, I think the problem we had is that the genre was too early, man. It was too, it was birthed too early. It was too new. People still trying to get their heads around it. Mm. And we're trying to get people to kind of come into a variation of that. Mm. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. does that make sense? Yeah, what of I'm course saying? it does, yeah. So, you know, it's just the kind of like, it's, as with all things, it's about timing. You the know thing I mean? is as well, even then, even at that time, when we was doing the Brit Core, you had um, a lot of people that was probably into hip hop in the 80s, <clears throat> probably ended up moving on. Mm -hmm. to like, now you say music, we do move on quickly in London. So those people that were hip hop fans probably ended up moving on to hardcore, mm -hmm. and then eventually into drum and bass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And look at the drum and bass scene now. Now, crazy. It's crazy. crazy. You know what I mean? Which has but its own can... label, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you so, know what that is. Ironic, though. Yeah, so you would have thought all of those, like, drum, I mean, the drum and bass MCs themselves, they're fast mm. as well. You know what I mean? So they're more than like they were probably into hip hop, I would have mm. thought. You know what I mean? So from hardcore to drum and bass, that sort of crowd moved away from, mm. from hip hop. But your speed was even closer to the, the essence of that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you guys would, you know, you, when you hear Prodigy, early Prodigy, you know, Hijack, I mean, these are all just one in the same almost, I mean, an example, you know, um, Fingers, etc. You know, it, there's a, there is a real correlation there oh. that was reflectant of, it was, again, a social commentary of what's actually going on with the sound and where it's heading to, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. But it's interesting you mentioned Hijack because, you know, it's common knowledge, but Comanche Sly is also known as the unknown MC. So he <laughs> would move from hip hop, and I'm sure he had more success going into that the UK garage scene. Yes, right, yeah, yeah. And like what B's just said there about like people moving into hardcore into drum and bass had more success. So maybe they were in the same they were definitely in the same boat as us, in a genre which was predominantly American. Mm. And then what they did, they took elements from it and moved off into a completely different genre mm. and created a genre. Mm. Maybe that's where we might have missed out mm. because we stuck in the same that same musical mm. genre, hip hop, do you know what I mean? Mm. Which, like, as I say, different now, but back then it was quite limiting to try and get your voice heard over other people because, like I said, you had the formula, which is the US stuff mm. coming over, and our stuff, which, like, you know, especially if you're a person who's not necessarily bothered about UK hip hop or not, you're going to consider our stuff to be, like, you know, different to what you could get from the Americans, you know what I mean? So, yeah. But, uh, but I, yeah, no, it's an interesting point. Like, it's definitely really strong point that yeah that it's a very interesting it's an interesting topic mainly because when you look on you know on, ref, on reflection you're like wow like you guys were onto something mm. early maybe t maybe too early too early but there's a bit like there's no reason why that couldn't be revisited which it does mm. in the forms of your music mm. but you know like when i hear kurok you know son of noise putting out new releases, you know, and it's got um, Dirty Goods on it. Mm. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden you're just like, yeah, actually, where, why the fuck is this genre not, it, what, why are we not grabbing what is essentially ours mm. and moving with mm. it? It's, mm. it's, it's, it's a very curious I think subject. It's, I think, well, you now have got other genres who've superseded it. You've got the grime, you've got the drum and bass. Mm. And, um, and let's be honest, the lifeblood with any music, any cultural art form really is, can it be relevant to the youth at that time? Mm. Is it going to be relevant to the 16, 17 year olds of today, even younger? Mm. And if it isn't, okay, then because just by the nature of time, your support base is going to get older and it's going to shrink mm. Mm -hmm. and shrink and shrink. Because we get older, people, mm -hmm. things happen to them. Mm. If that's your audience pool, it's going to shrink. So that's the lifeblood of anything is if, does it appeal to the younger audience? Mm. Yeah. I remember when we did a tour in Germany and, um, it was quite interesting. The promoter, she was down, man. Like, the, the show, the tour was going really well. But she was, like, quite, like, down. I was like, is everything all right? Do you know what I mean? You're a cup of tea. What's going on? <laughs> and she said, no, what they're saying, and this is, like, this is talking for someone who worked for a major distributor and a record yes. company, Pius, in yeah. Germany. Yeah, yeah. They were struggling because, at that time, the kids were basically into the PlayStation. Right. They weren't buying CDs like mm. they used to. Mm. They were being their minds were being diverted by computer games. Mm -hmm. So the record companies are saying, "Well, hang on a minute, we're starting to lose revenue from our music sales." Do you understand what I'm saying? So yeah. that was happening back then. Do you know what I mean? And wow. now people are like the whole commoditization of music, the Spotify and all that. Like kids don't really want to pay for mm. music. Do you know mm. what I mean? So they want it. They don't really want to pay for it. And we don't even have to talk about. 
the proliferation yeah. of video games now. Yeah, it's yeah. like embedded. So, you know, that's always yeah. a tension you're fighting up against. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I think all you can do is like craft what you do, believe in what you do, and sometimes like you just have to like let the cars fall where they may. Yeah. You know what I mean? The victim of your own success being, you know, trailblazing ahead, then inadvertently the, the, the pioneering of that, it's, it's, it, it moves so fast, it's like, a, like a you know starburst. You yeah. Know? But yeah. then the, the the residue from that creates all these other things. Yes. Isn't that something? Yeah. Wow. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. We, sh we should be proud yeah. of that. Thousands. Because Hell yeah. in the US they love drum and bass. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. drum and bass had its direct lineage from hip hop. Yeah. UK. But they have decided yeah. to create something and branch off. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So we should definitely be proud of that. Without question. You know. Um. For the for the youngsters out there, give us a give us a time, give us a a a, a reflection on what life was like for you guys growing up, not necessarily in hip hop, in the environment of London, and what what you know gave birth to the sound. Mm. <sighs> growing up in London in the seventies and eighties, lot of chimneys I had to go up. Chimneys, kind of cleaning chimneys and Me? stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I nearly fell for that you one. <laughs> nearly, lo you nearly lost me there. <laughs> Damn, another podcast. <laughs> um, oh, it all depends who you are, really. For us, basically, or for me, we didn't really, in terms of um, grief or aggro and anything like that, we didn't really trouble no one. And no one really troubled us, to be honest. You know what I mean? You could say our life was pretty cool growing up in the mm. 80s, you know. It weren't, you know, I mean, today's a little bit different. <laughs> but, um, yeah, growing up in the 80s, obviously, <clears throat> you know, there was a lot of riots them days as well, innit? There was mm. a lot of, racism was hard. <clears throat> you know, you can't really shy away from that. It was there, yeah. you know what I mean, for everyone. And um, you could say we got on with it, but then, you know, it's, 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 it's just how it was, man. We just, mm. we just grew up, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. We just grew up, so yeah, life in the eighties too, nineties. Yeah, man. It, 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 yeah, I mean, like just to kind of yeah, for us, we were kind of humble, so mm. we can't really paint a picture that like, you know, we we had to, as soon as we stepped out our doors, we had to fight gangs, something like you know what I mean, like uh, some sort of warriors business. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. going from Leighton to Leightonstone, we yeah, had to yeah. fight. It's nothing yeah. like that, but for us, a lot of our musical awakening was from school. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously hip hop coming over and going up to groove records and stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, one of the key members of Gunshot, a guy called Breakmaster Matt, he got into breaks early. He got into breaks from the age of 11. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's mad. He just got into that and that kind of opened up our eyes into a whole Ain't different... Something. Yeah, yeah, man, like 11, yeah. man. And then um, this is before Gunshot was formed, actually. It's like White Child Ricks is a well-known body popper and a graffiti artist. Bad, bad. <laughs> and... Um, what happened was, I heard on the grapevine that he had decks. <laughs> so I had my connect with Breakmaster Matt, had all the breaks, he had the ultimate breaks, just, mm. he, had, he had it all. And I got speaking to White Child Rick, said, like, I'm a scratch DJ. I wasn't. <laughs> good, uh, good, like, good. I, I wasn't, man. Yeah. <laughs> good entry, though. You know yeah. what I mean? I said, I'm a scratch. He goes, yeah, yeah. He said, come up, man, come up. I went, oh, shit. So I've gone to watch, I've gone to Matt, I said, Matt, give me some... Give me some braids, give me something. Let me go out there and see how far I can carry on the facade. <laughs> so I've gone around, watch how Rick's ass. He's done some oh, madness. Like, brrr, it goes, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Took back Matt's record, there were damaged and all the rest of it. But and from that, formulated, formulated a great friendship with Watch Ricks. And then fast forwarding somewhat, you know, I knew our client, we were friends, Danny and all that, mm. you know what I mean? And then knew he kind of could, could like rhyme and so kind of got him involved. And then Kuro. Met him at uh, Wimpy. <laughs> he used to work at Wimpy at Oxford Street. That's a well like. known uh, restaurant establishment. For yeah, yeah, like yeah. Wimpy, man, back yeah. in the day. So that yeah. kind of formulated that. And B, I've known B since the age of 11 and stuff. So so that kind of formulated the basis for Gunshot, really. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Even um, Q I think Q-Rock was. Um, <clears throat> I knew Q-Rock because his, his parents used to own a, um, a off license in the estate mm. that I used to live near. And to be honest, I think Kuro's parents was probably the first black business owners that I see. Mm. Ever. Really? You mm. know what I mean? Wow. Yeah, back in them days. And, um, wow. <laughs> yeah, so you used to go in there and buy your little drinking thing, mm. whatever. But yeah, nah, so that's how I kind of knew Kuro. So. Wow. 
you, you know. You guys yeah. kind of came like a united front. Mm. I mean, it, it was definitely it, from the the cover of the twelve inch Battle Creek Brawl. <coughs> also, I, I'm, you know, you know, putting words into your mouth, but being from East London and having just such a collective amount of you guys and just, you, you know, mm. it, it's it's power in numbers, isn't mm. it? Mm. I love that. Yeah, about I mean, everyone course. loved the music back then. You know what I mean? So everyone was. I mean, I used to DJ as well. So, <laughs> with, you know, you had Breakmaster Matt going up west. I used to go to west all the time, all those record shops and everything. I know the brothers that was DJs, mm. cousins that was DJs. My cousin had a radio station, so I used to DJ playing hip hop in that radio station mm -hmm. at the time. You know what I mean? So, music is kind of was always in us, right from well, in me anyway, right from mm. very, very, very young age. You know what I mean? So. so to be involved with the gunshot boys and all that, it was something else, mm. you know what I mean? Mm. Um, mm. And even when you're DJing, DJing on the radio, obviously we used to, we loved the American music because, you know, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the, the sound that came out of the Bronx, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? We wouldn't be sitting here right now. Mm. But at the same time, as a DJ, we would, for me anyway, we'll play the American music, we'll go out there, we'll buy it, get the latest and the greats and all of that, but then you're still kind of interested what's happening on your own shores. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you've got to support your own shores, man. You've got to support your own. Yeah. You know, we support America by buying the music. We bought it, that's fine. But when you've got new guys coming up, and there was a lot, you know what I mean, at the time, there still is now. Mm -hmm. You've got to support them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You've got to give them a way in. You know, that's what we try to do. You mm -hmm. know, so. Favourite UK artist from back then? Uh. Whoa. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> just before I answer that, actually, can I just quickly just go back on just to follow up when you talk about strength in numbers? There was at that time, I think it was unconscious. It was all about having your man's how many mans you can get on a record cover. Because mm. I remember Blade had it with his song. Mm. He had his mans, mm. and in fact, he stood in front of a couple of police cars. Mm. Couldn't quite do that. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So I think for us, it was like how many mans can we yeah. round up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And like mm. have them showing a degree of like power. Do you know what I mean? Solidarity. Solidarity. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But going back to that, it was hijacked for us. Like yeah. for me, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'll be honest, you the gunshot that one. There was a lot of bands who had the one moniker, like mm. Hard Noise, Gunshot. It was mm. all one, do you know what I mean? Mm. But for me, it was Hijack. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know for B. Yeah, I mean, like I say, we listened to a lot. I mean, Demon Boys was... Yeah, was, of course. There's so many at that time before us that came. Like, so before, like, Demon Boys was just... I remember hearing the, the, the album or the North Side. And plus, Demon Boys was not too far from us. Mm. So, you know what I mean? They were from mm. Tottenham. That's right, just not. You know what I mean? So you could just relate to it. You know, I went to college with a guy that that kind of reminded me of um, uh, what's the Demon D, mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of dressed the same, the same sort of swagger. Mm -hmm. Cause you know they were into their reggae as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So Demon Boys was like, you know, you know, and then even that, you had MC Duke when he came up with these. You know, so there was quite yeah. a few before us. Cookie Crew, that's Cookie right. Crew. They came yeah. down, so they did a show in Lloyd's Park in Walthamstow, yeah. and I was like transfixed. That was the first time I ever heard "Blow Your Head" JB's. Crazy. Yeah, and then they yeah. had um, Pete the Breaker as well. Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? Like they like they brought the whole thing down. And I was like, damn! And they used to go spats a couple of times. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? But so yeah. all those crews wow. and hard rock side, the Max and, and Dave, hard yeah, yeah, rock yeah. side movement. Yeah, Th there was a lot happening even before we came out. You know what I mean? Mm. In the eighties, in terms of hip hop wise, there's mm. there's a lot. Nutriment, so. London Bridge is falling down. Yeah. There you go. That, yeah. yeah, that song there, man. Do you know what I mean? Oof. Crazy. Yeah, crazy. And for somebody that was outside of London, which I was, you know, getting these records, even if it was, you know, predated me, you know, I'd go into it. Mm. You know, what is it? You know, Scientists of Sound or something? Yeah. You know, Caliphs? Yeah. You know, was yeah. it? You know, uh, Catch-22, Crispy 3. Catch you know, these, yeah. these people that, you know, it wasn't just London concentrating. Unanimous decision. Yeah, unanimous yeah. decision. Wow. To be honest, I think for me personally, and that's just my personal take on it, in terms of UK hip hop, I think bomb diffusal oh. for me is probably by best. unanimous decision. Wow. I, I, I'd yeah. second that. It's the best Google's, one. you know what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. unanimous like, decision. Unanimous yeah. decision. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. It was their last song, mm. and it was a diss track to Cookie Crew, I believe, mm. and Wee. it was called Bomb Diffusal. And boy, did they diffuse that bomb, man! Yeah. And Ooh. also, I might just add, you know, big shout out to DJ Disorder, you gasslers, because yes. he was a man that really yeah. brought these names to the forefront. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't matter what man. decade or genre, it was just like bang, bang, have yeah. this, have this, and DJ MK for that matter. Yeah, all definitely. Time. Yeah. yeah, Disorder's um, UK collection must be massive. Mm. He's got it all. He had it all. Can yeah. you imagine? Yeah. I know, man. He's um, yeah, big Hard up Disorder. Yeah, man. 
You know what I mean? I know he's changed that. He's not really in at that anymore, but yeah. Mm. Well, reggae's always... Because he plays a lot of reggae, doesn't he? Mm. Um, as we were saying, sound system, reggae was always a big influence to the Brit sound. Mm. It just was by default. Mm. Because we... You know, it was so impactful as a genre, and hip hop was—it's all one and the same. It's kind of—it's well documented. And often, when I ever heard Karis One doing his ragged style thing, I was like, "That doesn't sound right, bro." <laughs> 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 that doesn't quite sound it, right. He sounds, sounds a lot bionic. better than some, though. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? If I'm honest. <laughs> yeah. No disrespect to the guy, but yeah. I definitely thought to myself, "Yeah, well, but we got bionic, though." Yeah, <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, man. Yeah, and like different. Alkaline as well, and yeah. and um, yeah. obviously Dean. Boy Mike J, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like Mike wow. J, man. You know, so we, we got pedigree, man. We got pedigree. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, yeah. one hundred percent. You know, and I think all Gunshot's trying to do is to kind of like navigate that ship in terms of what we do and keep it going mm. as much as and for as long as we can, really. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, man. But. We're here, still here, man. 2024, new album out and yeah. all that. So, we got the new album, yes. Yeah, a couple no, of weeks we, old now. Like Lebanon, volume <laughs> one. On. Boom. The volume one might tell you a little something, I don't know. That's it. But, um, That's but yeah, it. man. And you've got our boy Coasty on. Yeah, man, yeah. So, um, Coasty, God rest his soul, mm. he, uh, he kind of featured on um, the opening song on the B side, Pistol. Killed it, and like I said to you earlier, man, it's like I was like, I've got to work with Coasty again, mm. and in circumstances mm. that it wasn't happening. But look, we got him on there, mm. there, and it was just a like he came down, took him out for lunch, got pissed. Uh, he would have been a pig in shite. Yeah, we were like, <laughs> he, <laughs> he had two, like, there's first down, big up arrow, and then there was gunshot. Yeah, like he was devoted. To you guys, mm. like, without question, mm. he must have just yeah. I mean, you guys were friends anyway, but yeah, yeah. yeah. We worked together in two thousand eight. Snuff um, hip hop blues. Mm. That's the first time me wow. and Coasty recorded. Wow, fuck. And then we had to wait like nearly whatever fifteen years later, mm. which really shouldn't have been fifteen mm. years, but it is what it is. But Coasty, man, you know. And then Alkaline, of course. Yes. You know what I mean? Rest Alkaline was like Coasty, rest in peace, Alkaline. yeah. Alkaline wow. was a massive loss. Yeah great friend to us yeah. before the music and um you know we released uh alkaline uh, song in may in honor mm -hmm. of him like mm -hmm. kind of and then like the, the album's kind of like black lebanon volume one it's got nothing to do with anything political believe it or not mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean but it's hard to kind of explain that to people um but black lebanon is really about like just you know the experiences of black youth in london you know mm. if i'm honest that's, that's amazing what it's about but then yeah. Firstly, it's really about honouring Alkaline. Al Alkaline mm. heard a lot of the new songs before wow. he passed. Yeah, he heard them and he kind of like, you know, he'd say, yeah, yeah, I like that one, I like that one. And, you know, he heard Pistol and all that, he heard all of that stuff. So it's in, it's in honour of Alkaline and Coasty, mm -hmm. really. That's what that album's all about. It became that way, do you know what I mean? That's incredible. Yeah, so it's uh, it's quite an it's been an emotional journey mm. because obviously wasn't expecting that. Yeah. And it changed what that album meant. Because on the first instance, it's about it had its kind of like yeah, Black Lebanon, like the you know the experience of the Black youth. But now it's all about Coastal and Alkaline. Really. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? A question that kind of could be a bit spicy. <laughs> a question that came up in my head as you were talking there is the timeline of an artist. You guys are good people to speak to because you you you've lived through a lot. You've seen a lot of generations. You've, you've seen recent passings. And the ambition is still there, like mm. making, keeping it going. But are there any, are there any actual challenges in your minds in 2024? Obviously, there are challenges in the 90s, but you know, we're talking about a time where people are passing, mm. where time is passing quicker, mm. where albums may take a little bit longer for all of the family life related reasons mm. like what how, how does that when i say this how does it sit with you mm. in the current state of gunshot of great question great question yeah <laughs> um very much aware of um our mortality but very much aware that life is for living mm. and if you have even some small semblance of talent you should use it till you can't anymore, mm. until you don't want to. Mm. Because I think, you know, you know, it's a cliche, but you know, you don't know what you've got until it's gone. Mm. 
So whilst whilst the brain still is still ticking, brain cells are still ticking over. Why not create? Mm. It's mm. all about creativity at the end of the day. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes it's not even so much about quality, because people's in ideas of art is different to a next man's. Do you mm. know what I mean? But it doesn't mean to say their art mm. should be valued any less than the next mm. man's. It's their interpretation. Yeah. And it's only as I've got an older us to come to realise mm. that. Do you know what I mean? So when I go in the booth now. Because one thing Alkaline said to me, he said, like, I love the songs, but we need a sound boy killing. We just need to, we need to kill. <laughs> Not literally, but we, we, we need, Alkaline yeah. was like, we need to kill people, yeah, yeah. like, you yeah. know, lyrically. Yeah. So the second album's all about sound boy killing. That Razor, we were talk, yeah. they were talking about tonight. Yeah, you know what I mean? Dancing, you know what I mean? Dance, that's, we're dancing with Razors this time, man, volume two. But when I go in the booth, I'm more aware of the fact that I have, um, a talent, mm. yeah, and I want to use it to the best of my ability mm. because I don't know what might happen next mm. year. Mm. You know, I'm getting older, do you know what I mean? Mm. I may not have the enthusiasm or the enthusiasm may be taken away from me. So mm. I want to make the most of what I have whilst I can do it. And hopefully people can feel that coming over in the songs that, mm. you know what, I'm unencumbered with all the previous ego and all the stuff mm. I had when I was younger. Now it's mm. all about, look, man, we're in this, we're in this, man. Mm -hmm. Let's try and make the best of it and see if we can, you know what I mean, push the envelope whilst we're doing it, having a bit of fun. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's it, because a lot of artists, they always, they reinvent themselves. Mm. You know what I mean? So, I think, I remember you said it years back, <clears throat> you know, when you bring out your music, that's it, you brought it out. Mm. It don't really belong to us no more. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not ours. So, whatever, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, there's nothing we can do about that. Mm. You know what I mean? We will just carry on. Mm. But what we won't do is hold on to music. Mm. You know what I mean? Because you, you hear stories all the time. Yeah, man, I've got Jewish Jew in here, but holding it back, holding it back. Mm. A lot of people hold back their music. What for? Mm. You know what I mean? If you're <laughs> making end. your music yeah. and you've got singers or MC, DJ, or whatever, mm. bring it out. Mm. Bring it out. You know what I mean? It might not be part of your main album or mm. something like that but you can still bring it out mm. because it's your music it's not per it's not worth to holding it on your computer mm -hmm. no. you know what i mean mm -hmm. so Completely that's great b what do you uh, what do you see when when you look back on those tv shows with you guys absolutely fucking hammering it what do you see in those young men <laughs> well uh, you see we was just hip-hop fans at the time you know what i mean hip-hop fans i was partying raving a lot, drinking, smoking, doing all those sort of things that you mm. did when you was young. Mm. Done it all, you know what I mean? But at the same time, it was, um, you know, you go back home, you know, you, you, you always end up back in your deep thoughts, so mm. I'm thinking about the next step, the next, you know, because mm. this game don't make money, mm. you know what I mean? And those deep thoughts, they never age, do they? Yeah. <laughs> no, still they the don't. Same they, still, they still do. Mm -hmm. you, you're not going to make Jay-Z money mm -hmm. in UK hip-hop. It's just one of those things, you, you know. But, you know, we've come at our time, and then you've got others that's going to come after. So, mm -hmm. you know, obviously now the grime artists, they're doing really well, Stormzy and all that. You know, we're not going to sit back and get jealous, because I know no, you used to hear that no. with, with um, US hip-hop from the old yeah. schools, like, oh, the old school, don't, you know, look at, you know, we're not like that. No, no. We embrace it, man, you know what I mean? I also so, think the youngsters embrace you guys as well. I mean, you, you hear Skepta talking about the, you know... I mean, he, he, what was that, Nordword? Nordword? This podcast, he was putting out all these UK hip-hop mm. acts and he knew who, who they were. It's funny, though, because there's... there's <laughs> UK hip-hop, to them, only goes back a certain time. Mm. So, like, if you're talking about Task Force Kalashnikov and London Posse, to them, and Jest... Mm. That's UK hip hop. Mm. Anything beyond that, they're not necessarily up on, mm. which is fine because the time, passing the time, mm. you ain't gonna expect people mm. to be into certain things that came out 35, 40 years mm -hmm. ago. So that's fine. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Do you know what I mean? Born, great born in the nineties, isn't it? Yeah, so exactly. So you know, that makes sense. In yeah. yeah. Which I have to sometimes. I have a little bit of a bugbear about not in the sense of when they, they kind of like their idea when UK hip hop starts is when people start making documentaries, mm. which is supposed to cover beyond then, mm. but they don't have the people from them in the documentary, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? So I, I have a little bit of a, because going back to that thing I said about art, alongside art is artefact, mm. right? So <laughs> art and the fact that art existed, why are you ignoring it? Mm -hmm. 
That's it. That's what mm-hmm. an artifact means. Do you know what I mean? So you should, if you're covering something from the eighties to the nineties. Why haven't you got like that many UK yeah, yeah. hip hop people in your teams? Yeah. What about all the rest mm. of them? And what about the ones outside of London? That's mm. it. Cause you, you know what I mean? UK hip hop, I know we can say this, we're from London. It's not just London. Mm-hmm. No. You know what I mean? Because there was a scene in Brighton. Yeah. There was a scene in Newcastle. Bristol's probably the scene. biggest scene in the Bristol. UK yeah, yeah. for Bristol. me. Without question. Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? So if you want to talk about the genre of UK hip hop, you've got to open it up got and to talk it about it. It's called everybody. UK hip hop, it's not called London hip hop. That's right, that's <laughs> yeah. right. Also, with every new social media platform comes this great reset. Yeah. So it's like it's a it's a race to the to the biggest views and the biggest numbers and what the algorithms do. And that by you know, you you by default, you reset the the grounds of what's old school or not, and that that also troubles me. Mm. You know, the idea of like, and it's not even about the numbers of followers that someone gets, but it's how they can change the narrative. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's anything you can do about that. Mm. It's a tough one because you know, you know, I mean, people have their own agendas for certain things, and then sometimes it's not even an agenda. It's about it's not even ignorance. It's about what you know, mm. do you know what I mean? Like, mm. I, I ain't gonna know certain things, even at my grand old age. Mm. There's certain genres mm. that will pass me by, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And I'm sure if I actually took a bit more time and research, I'd be like, oh wow, this is amazing. But there's gonna be names of bands mm. and stuff, they've blown away mm-hmm. the wind. So it happens. I remember when um, um, Ag Rock from Beastie Boys, like, he was asked in the interview, they were saying, like, oh, do you know what? Like, Beastie Boys got such an amazing. Discography, you're yeah, iconic. I've seen this. Yeah, 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 and they said like, would you want the youngers, younguns, to be into music now? And Ad Rock said no. No, he said no. In his mind, it's disposable. It's, it's disposable. Yeah. It was meant for that time. Yeah. It's yeah. like when I grew up, my mum, my mum my was listening to Jim Reeves and them mm. thing there, but I ain't <laughs> listening to Jim Reeves. Yeah, you know I mean, but that's what was relevant to her. Mm-hmm. Like you know, and then my our period of hip hop is what was relevant to us. But now that's passed on to a new generation because mm. that's one thing about hip hop, man. It, it will outlive us all. Yeah, you know really what I mean? we should be proud of that. Yeah, we paid our part. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, and here on K- Killer Killer Podcast, we we uh, champion the past, future, future, and present. And here. present, yeah. absolutely. Um, and you got the new album, so that's going to be. I've a... got. We've got the new album, Black Lebanon, Volume One. If, if you didn't hear me say that yeah, before, yeah, do you know what I mean? That's Fourteen cool. bangers on the digital album. Ten on the vinyl, we can't get everything on the vinyl, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's volume one for a reason, as I said, we've got a volume two coming out hopefully next year, mm. do you know what I mean? And then we'll probably just walk away into the sunset, if I'm honest, yeah. but you know what I mean? So going back to your question, if, if we was to look back on ourselves in the night or whatever, I could mm. just look back and I can just think, you know what, we kind of, we did it, you know what mm. I mean? You know what I mean? I am say to myself that I was lucky, we were, well, to be, I was, you know, a group of friends that I grew up with, you know what I mean? And we was a unit, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? How many albums was it? Four albums, five, five albums. Four, four now. Four, four. Five if you count the singles. If, if you count the single, 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 singles. It's a lot, isn't it? It's a lot. Mm, it's yeah. a lot. Yeah. And and even then, we was kind of a such a good unit, and a good bunch of friends that when we done our shows back then, mm. we had obviously the main crew, you know, Alkali Mercury, White Dread Ricks. Um. And then when we done our tours, mm. it was our man selling our t-shirts. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Big up Paul. Big up mm-hmm. Paul. And um, we had the radio station on my side with my cousin doing the radio station, playing the hip-hop music and everything like that. And then um, Lucas G, we done our own Solid. management. Yeah, yeah it was, we it was, done it all ourselves, Yeah, basically. did it all ourselves. And White Chubb Ricks is like... The man. Yeah, like, yeah he's like a polymath, man. Yeah. He's, he's one of, you know, you come across people good at everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, you get him to make a cup of tea. We the best cup of tea you've ever done. <laughs> he's, just one of, he's just one of them ones. So An we anomaly. were lucky, yeah. Mm. But as yeah. B said, man, the fact we was all friends and we humble ourselves, we just... You know, I mean, sometimes that's the reward, isn't it? It's like you just kind of do what you got to do, man. Just keep it moving, and then mm. people, people will come. Yeah, that's you know right. I mean? People will come. That's what it's all about. Yeah, man. Keeping it moving. You know, gentlemen. <laughs> time has come. It's been an absolute fucking pleasure. Yeah, quick, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're like about Andy on the podcast. <laughs> Be my absolute don. Respect Lovely all the way, man. Yeah, man. I'm glad yes. we finally got to do it, man. Yeah, you know I'm I mean? stoked. I mean, I, speaking personally, like, I grew up with you guys, so. 
to have you guys on the podcast is a massive tick box on my. Uh, no, respect, no, for, respect, having respect us, for having us. Respect for having us. Do you know what I mean? Because like yeah, it's man. been a long time in the offing, so yeah, yeah it's good, man. Thank good you. vibes all around. All right, Killer Killer podcast. I like it was out of fashion. All right, don't forget cop the album Black Lebanon. All right, and uh, dive into some brick core. All right, <laughs> <laughs> the new genre for 2024. In it. All right, <laughs> yo, listen, crime don't pay, but neither did they. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. You stay lucky, people. Gunshot tell ya. Peace. 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 Cool. <laughs> <laughs>